There we go. Recording is underway. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'll see you in an hour-ish.
I now step into the mind and firmly come to join you. This communication and all communications of this style are in fact one mind overlapping another mind. So that as a second mind can take control and do, do the talking, drives the ship. The first mind is asked to step to one side and to relinquish control. so that it may allow the visiting mind to be in control. Now the communication that takes place, the originating mind still has some awareness And we attempt now just to move that last remnants to one side. <clears throat> now your mind, it is true to say, will make an incredible servant, but rather a problematic master when your mind is in control and works unabated it is scattered it has trouble focusing and in having trouble focusing cannot retain facts so well through the simple act of building concentration, you will gain control of your mind. And then be able to use it the way that you wish to use it. So you can tell straight away, I am saying that there is a you and there is a mind. You are not the mind. The mind sits firmly between body and spirit. Like a grey area, if you wish. A mind field. When you are firmly planted in that grey area, then there is little awareness of spirit. Everything seems to happen between body and mind. But once when a mind is clear, it has been asked to be still. or to attend to certain facts on demand. Then the connection between spirit and body can be more pure. And the mind will allow the spirit the influence. The qualities of spirit, love, peace, knowledge, truth, consciousness, and others, do not exist within the mind. 
they exist within the spirit. But they are available for the mind to pick from or to allow through. If you were to undertake some time of meditation, then you would find that with time, there would be more peace and joy and love in your life. Until there are times of stresses, anguish, or let us say problems. When the mind would disturb this energy and allow it through into the physical world less purely. So that is how you get conditional love when unconditional love is being sent. Unconditional love sits in spirit and attempts to manifest into the world. But the mind then stands in the way and does not work purely and then dilutes the love so that it arrives for your partner or for the event and situation with all sorts of conditions attached to it. So now you get I will love you as long as you stay next to me. I will love you while you do this for me. I will love the sunny weather, but I will not love the cloudy weather. I will love this person, but not that person. So here you can see that the mind is causing dilution or distraction. So as a consequence, you only get, let us say, 1% of the love available to you. You can find peace in certain situations, but not all situations. <clears throat> because the mind is the barrier, which may be rather dense and thick, or with effort can be quite translucent. So rather like shining a light, when there is nothing in the way, the light can appear in its true form. But as you progressively put denser and denser material in the way, then that light changes intensity. Yet it is still the same light. Here, the mind has become the servant. Forgive me, the mind has become the master. And the mind is firmly in control. There are still glimpses of spirit in the physical life, but they are rather brief undiluted. diluted. 
So it is interesting to see for each of you. When you are sitting in a nice still state, and of course there is feelings that are associated with that, But if you add any stress to your life or fear or anger and many others, then you will lose the peace. Not because the peace is no longer there, but because you have chosen the stress, the anger or anything else. So that quality is available to you, but you have picked another. It is simply an act of picking the correct emotion and not the other emotion. If you find yourself having anger arising or frustration or stress or anything else, you should use your awareness. Use the awareness or consciousness that exists in spirit to see the anger or stress arising. Just watch it arise. And in watching it, you will then watch it fall away. If you try to hold on to that anger, it will then cover over the peace. It is not the anger that is the problem. It is trying to hold on to it. When you have other options available to you. So every minute of the day you can pick. Which quality do you like? complete happiness or do you prefer frustration? It is as simple as that. And I pause now so you understand. It is as simple as that. When somebody drives badly in front of you or pushes it in your way or says a comment which you do not like, you let go of your peace and follow that. And when I say it like this, you can see that it is, that is complete madness. It is far wiser to watch that anger rise, recognize it. But if you do not hold it, it will eventually subside all by itself. And with practice, of course, you will not retain any of that. And the mind purifies, becomes clear 
and more and more of the spiritual qualities available to you become manifest into your life. There is more joy, more happiness, more contentment. The same bad driver will come in front of you. But you will not sell your happiness. You would not try to judge them and criticize them or condemn them in any way. A frustration will arise and you can let the frustration go with the choice of peace instead. So this is the simple act of clarifying the mind, stopping it running out of control. So if a friend says anything bad to you, you can deal with it in its true way. By letting it rise and letting it fall. This is the act of sanity, where previously you were working from insanity. So once you have control of your mind and you can watch events happening, you then have a choice to use your mind and to work with it in your way. Now the mind is the creator. It creates everything that you see. It creates things that you do not see. It creates things just around the corner, yet to come. It creates your problems, or it creates your salvations. And when there is peace allowed to flow through it, then that you will see a lot more peace around you. When you are angry in mind, you will see anger around you. So you create, fire the mind, all the situations that are there. The mind creates the playing field and the players and the ball. So the signs of, let us say, discontentment in your physical life is really a sign that your mind needs to be purified to allow the contentment to come through. Every problem and every joyous situation is created by the mind. And therefore, is a signpost to say there is work to do, be done in the mind. And there are other options available to you. So 
So with hindsight and with clarity, when you are feeling unheard or unloved, before you complain to the other person, check what state your mind is in and is it allowing the purity to come through or not. Now, so with time, with practice, with determination, your life will gradually become less reactive and you will pick different emotions and qualities to express. The channel between spirit through mind into the physical world will become easier, more open, and let us say a broader, rather like a broader pipe from a narrow channel to a wide channel. And then you will firmly say that the spirit world has manifested into the physical world. For some people at some times, during their times of quiet, of stillness, of calm, spirit can come naturally through that channel into life. And this may result in phenomena. So let us say your a bowl of fruit may tip upside down or an apple may roll along the floor. That is far more possible when there are times of stillness and calm. If anybody experiences this, this phenomena, then you will notice this happens at time of calm. It is slightly possible at other times, at the vast majority of times, when you are still, you can allow that to happen. Now with practice, if you so wish, you can then control and manipulate this and work with it. But that is a topic for another discussion. But the ability sits there. Also, you will find when the mind is still, other minds are available. Other knowledge is capable of being downloaded or discovered. And also the possibility of telepathy. where someone in another room may send a thought. Now that other room may not be in the same house, the same city or even the same country, but it can be sent. 
but it requires initially practice of course but initially the quiet mind you will find it harder to do when you try to force it but when you gently let the thoughts drift from one to another then this is possible now you need to excuse me one second I still have control. So if you wish to practice, then start by using shapes. Maybe draw 10 different shapes. A square, a triangle, a circle, a star, a boat, a car, or something of your choice. And send it to another. In theory, this should give the result if it is pure, pure science. then it will give the possibility of no more than one in 10 or getting the answer correct one in 10. See if you can improve on that. I believe we have members of the same family and also friends watching now. You may practice that with each other if you wish. Begin with simple line drawings and work from there. The quieter your mind, the better. So in the way is the mind. And that can be used purely to transmit information. Now you may connect with people without knowing. So let us make an assumption. One person in one part of the world may link to another. And without knowing, talk or draw or write the same words or pictures. So you could say both are accessing the same knowledge. Now this brings up a whole topic. How does this occur? How do two people unconsciously, let us say, draw the same circle or say the same words? Now, the knowledge available sits in the world of spirit. And then is, let us say, transmitted by spirit. That is the incorrect phrase, but it is the phrase that is most understood. It is sent out, not to one, 
but to all. And in sending that out, of course, then it is picked up. It is picked up by all those tuning in to that frequency. So you will find you and your partner will begin to think and talk about the same things. You will understand each other as your frequency or vibration, if you wish, starts to become one. Members of the family will start to understand each other and know things about each other. Then communities, then countries, then humanity. So you can have circumstances where if two people tune in to the same signal, then they will draw or write or accomplish the same invention on different sides of the world. And not just with the humankind. Also other creatures, as there becomes a community of or a consciousness of birds and fish and other things. So it is true that an injury on the edge of the forest can be felt on the other side. This is the same phenomenon. And proves that there are many links between each person, no matter where you are. You just have to open yourself up to that connection. Now, for those of you which are chasing realization or enlightenment, liberation, these words are exactly the same. Rather, you are choosing to sit firmly in the world of spirit. To do so, you just need to clarify the mind and not attach to anything of the mind. Any experiences or labels or anything else. And if you remember my first talk saying that the Creator expresses themselves through Sat Chit Ananda, truth, consciousness, and bliss. This too is part of the journey. But let us say a deeper topic for those that wish to explore it. Now, let us take this one step 
deep. You should remember that you are not the body trying to get to the spirit. Rather, you are the spirit that is trying to express itself purely into the body. If you wish the journey is downwards, it is not upwards. The issue is purely how many rocks are in the way. And again, this can be a deeper conversation. Now, part of these talks would not just about how to live a wholesome life, a pure life, a life of full of joy and love and happiness. It is also about how to practice what we are saying mediumship and trans mediumship and even physical mediumship. How psychic phenomena truly works. Cyclically, you are just tuning into the frequency of the other person. And you are reading that. The clearer the channel, the stiller the mind, then all other abilities come to you. All other abilities. And any ability that you so wish. With purity, as is said in your Bible, you can say to the mountain, move and it will do so. This is no more than the spirit correctly using the mind. But that of it is available to all. It is not available just to a few. But it is just a few that undertake the work to get there. <clears throat> so, if you remember last, well, last week, last talk, when we spoke about the four ways of healing, the body is capable of doing some stuff. The mind can create as well. The heart can send love to various injuries. But as I said then, it is the realm of spirit that creates the miracle. The miracle may be witnessed as being in or near the body but it has to come from the spiritual as the spirit directs the mind. The mind then directs the body. And undertakes the instructions purely or impurely. 
rather like a light shining through a prism. It can diffract into all the colors. Or you can remove the prism and have the light purely. Now let us talk again about an associated topic for those that were present they may remember this as I spoke about it more than once The realm of the afterlife that you describe is the realm of the progress of the soul. And soul, I am using this by definition of an individual spark of the spirit which is the whole. So the whole thinks, the soul thinks it is individual, but in truth it is part of a bigger, all-encompassing picture. So the soul begins its merry journey, learning, having experiences, understanding topics like compassion and joy and anger and what it's like to be a soldier or a nun. And it learns. In learning it progresses through the afterlife realms. And it gets finer and finer. Here, reincarnation needs to exist for the soul. To experience none, then to experience soldier. To experience disability. And then to experience joy. So reincarnation exists at the level of the soul. Now this is purely the play of the mind. All experience and needs for experience exist in this level. It is when that soul reaches, let us say, the higher realms, the level seven or the level nine, whichever numbers you want to use. It becomes less and less individual. And finally leaves what is known as the afterlife to become life. It leaves the afterlife to just become life. And then it becomes the one. It becomes spirit. You see, mankind talks about afterlife. Rarely talks about before life. If there is a before life and an after life, then surely it must just be life. Oh. Forgive me, the body reacts. It 
if there is just life, then there is just spirit. And the mind is in the way. Now I have been very careful with these descriptions to make sure everything we have spoken about is consistent. Not just within this series of talks, but within other talks. <clears throat> talks to individuals or talks to other groups. If it is the truth, then it has to be the same. Truth cannot be one day different to the next day. If that is so, then it is not truth. One and one is always two. It is not one and one is true on a Monday, but not Tuesday. When the body dies, Life does not die. Life carries on. But the body is left behind. You are life. And you come to animate the body. Now the discussion on mind, as you can tell, is not a small topic. We have all sorts of corners we could probe. What is mind? Where does ego fit within that mind? Where is memory? How can it be purified? There are many topics. But for this series of talks, I must now leave mind behind. And so next week, in our next talk, we will look at spirit. And we will touch on that topic. If you think mind is a big topic, wait until you get to spirit. Spirit, in essence, is going to be difficult to define. But when you talk of the qualities of spirit, they too are difficult to define. Try to give a description of love. Or truth or courage. And you'll find it like a slippery fish slipping through your palms. Not one that can be fully held onto. Now. So if you so wish. You 
you have something for you to try. You may practice the telepathy that I have spoken about. Send an image and see what is received by the other person. But it will take time and practice. But I encourage you to do so. Because the need for telepathy will be <clears throat> the need for telepathy will be a skill that you can use later. <clears throat> And it will become more prevalent at a later date. In essence, I am asking you to purify your mind and to receive whatever is available to you there. And if you remember a practice from many talks ago. To build the love. Before you undertake any type of difficulty or you feel the fear rising. <clears throat> The body is rather problematic today. So build the love. And you will find this exercise. Helps do negate or clarify the mind. It will remove the blockages in the mind. And you will then find you will just open your heart and the purity of love flowing through that channel will become stronger and stronger. This exercise alone has the potential to change your life. And the lives of those around you. Do not minimize this activity. <clears throat> so as the body now is giving me resistance, it is time for me to withdraw. So next week, we will tackle the topic of spirit. And we'll see if we can give you some clarity. Until I speak to you then, may love be always in your heart and mind. And let your actions show the purity of that love. God bless you all.
Right there, Mark. Hmm. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> you know, it's just so nice being in the depth of um I don't know what to describe it. It's like um nothing matters. Nothing exists. I'm going to carry the world. <laughs> yeah, whatever, down in wherever you are, and they're sitting there. It's lovely, I tell you. Um, yeah, well, there you go. Um, <laughs> hope it was good. Hope the earth moved for you. <laughs> um, it was great. That's it. Thank it was you. Awesome. Good, good, good. Um, uh, look, I get this recording soon, and and um, I'll post it onto YouTube. Please share if you wish. Invite others if you wish, or send them if you wish. Whatever. As I say, this is not about me. This is not. This is about them wanting to say whatever um i know somebody in the next few days is going to say watch the recording <laughs> i've got this barrage of people say watch the recording but i don't the um so anyway i do read the notes um but that's it all right everybody um is it on youtube yeah it will be um but not for an hour or two um but um It'll be there. So if you need anybody needs a link or anything else, please say and I'll YouTube YouTube you the link. Send you the YouTube link. <clears throat> All right, please invite others as well if you wish and um I'll share it with them. Anyway, breakfast time. Hey, oh, yeah, nice one, cat. You think like that too. You think, hey. you think breakfast time. It's, yeah, it's breakfast, not breakfast for you. You've got another couple of hours to go before breakfast for you, Angelina. The, um, <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks very much. I'll see you next Thank week you. if Thank I'm Mark. not seeing you somewhere else. All right. See ya. Thank you, Mark. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank